Welcome to 2A for Today. My name is Zoe and I'm your host at 2A for Today. 2A for Today is a program where we explore all things Second Amendment, all things that protect, threaten, and violate the Second Amendment rights of all Americans. Today, I got a special treat for you. Representative Shane Stringer. He's an Alabama House rep who was fired in 2021 by the sheriff's, the county sheriff's office. And I'll, I'm gonna let him tell his story, but he was elected in 2018. He had a position on constitutional care that was different than after he got elected, okay? And after he got elected, he understood after reviewing and auditing a bunch of sheriffs and people in the area that were, you know, experts, people in other states that had already had it passed and to kind of review and see what kind of uh, tragedies they had to experience as a consequence. And his mind was changed. He became a advocate of constitutional carry or permitless carry as it's called. And so uh, let me introduce you to Representative Shane Stringer. Thank you for being on the show today, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, okay, I kind of told a brief, uh, you know, synopsis of your story, but why did you get into law enforcement sure. in the first place? I, I grew up in a family of law enforcement. My father was a police officer. And uh, so I just grew up around it and it's been in my blood my whole life and uh, become a police officer when I was 21. I've um, uh, been in law enforcement for 30 years now and uh, I've had a great career. So uh, over the years, I've worked my way up through the ranks and, um, you know, eventually made my way to captain with the Mobile County Sheriff's Department. Uh, during that time, I was approached and asked to run for a state legislator here in Alabama. And I did so in 2018 and won and have been here ever since. So at my time during, uh, during my time as law enforcement, you know, I'm I guess I had a different opinion of constitution carry, of permanent carry. And, you know, a lot of that came from what you're being taught and teached, uh, you know, through our law enforcement leaders, the sheriff in Mobile County and, and the surrounding counties. And, and they're telling you that it's bad. But I also had a burden. Uh, you know, I took an oath in, as a law enforcement officer and as a state legislator to uphold the Constitution. So the more I dug into this and, and looked, I it was obvious it was a constitution issue. Yeah. And I started reaching out to sheriffs across the state, I mean, across the country that have constitution carry and were being told that nothing, you know, changed. It was no major uh, issues with this and they didn't have a problem with it. So, you know, it took away all the fear factor that the sheriff and uh, his supporters were, were putting out that this was going to create a dangerous situation for our community and, you know, it's going to create the wild, wild west. And and when in fact it does not, it, it actually creates the opposite. You know, it's interesting too, that the arguments against constitutional carry are actually arguments against the constitution. <laughs> They're arguments exactly. against your, the God given rights being protected by your government. Now I understand you can make whatever laws you want in the States that the, that the, uh, you know, the, the constitution doesn't, you know, give power to the federal government to make. The states have that ability. But it's still a God-given liberty issue. And I think our founders, they nailed it. They said that the only thing necessary, it wasn't the president, it wasn't Congress. They didn't even say the governor of the states or the legislatures. It said that the only necessary duty for the security of a free state that was the free people is the militia, right? And so the right to keep and bear right. arms shall not be infringed. So they understood that security is hand in hand with a armed populace. <laughs> right. And so, you know, well, it's, it's been, it's I'm been sorry. a learning experience to, to see what's going on with, uh, you know, with all of this, with, you know, being basically terminated for having a, a different opinion than the, the sheriff. And, you know, it, it's um, liberty, liberty don't come easy. No, it doesn't. It does not arrive to on a feather bed. Uh, I think that was Thomas Jefferson. I think you can look that up, you guys. Check, fact check me on that and put it in the comments. But <laughs> um, I do have a question for you. You said 30 years in law enforcement. Now, was that entire time with the sheriff's office? No, I, I've worked with several different agencies in uh, throughout Mobile County. It's a, a pretty large county. Um, I spent 18 of those years uh, with the sheriff's department. I did leave there at one point and become a chief of police for approximately nine years. And I was a chief of police whenever I ran for office. Um, okay. And the reason for going back to the sheriff's department was, you know, a uh, uh, chief of police is a very demanding job. 
So it would be a little more difficult to be a legislator and doing that. So yeah. I've, I've made my rounds through, uh, you know, through the community there uh, uh, as a chief and a leader in law enforcement. I've uh, worked just about every division there is in the sheriff's department from SWAT team to, to the homicide unit. So, I mean, you, you would be, I would bring you into a court to be a subject matter expert. <laughs> and That's right. The sheriff disregarded all of your experience, all of the risk management that you have been trained to discern uh, and just decided to go with someone else. Is there, do you think there's a reason for that besides the, uh, the, the data points? No, I, I think it was, uh, you know, I personally, I feel like it was kind of a, uh, um, kind of to prove a point with me, you know, how dare, how dare you go against what he wanted is mm -hmm. the way I feel. Um, the permits here in Alabama are a source of re revenue for the sheriffs. And they're also a, a, uh, source of a, uh, control me mechanism. So, I think that's that's what it boiled down to. Uh, wow. You know, it's kind of a how dare you go against me deal. A source of revenue and control. I mean, that that spells out 2020 and 2021, doesn't it? <laughs> source of revenue that's right. and control. That's right. That, uh, yep. Our Constitution is supposed to protect us from that, I think. <laughs> that's right. Now, so tell me a little bit about um, the sheriff. He, he made a few comments. I listened to an interview he just did recently whereby he made some, um, some, I don't know, I think they were good arguments. It, one of his arguments is mm -hmm. that, um, not just that it will be unsafe, but that there's no way to know if somebody is illegally carrying a gun. Like he said to this, this is what he said to this effect, that if we pulled somebody over and they had a gun, then we would not have the ability to run that gun and determine whether or not it was stolen. Is that a true statement? As a 30 year law enforcement officer, I disagree with him. Uh, we have investigative powers and if there's probable cause to believe that the person has committed a crime, about to commit a crime or involved in a criminal activity, you can conduct a search and you can, um, you could run that gun or check it at that point. So I, I disagree with him on that point. Um, you know, they, they've argued that the permit is a tool for law enforcement. I don't think the Constitution should be used as a tool. I mean, if they come next and say that they want to change the uh, Fourth Amendment, unlawful search and seizure, and do away with having to get search warrants, and they can just search anybody's home at any time to take drugs, money, and guns off the street, are we, gonna, are we willing to change that? Um, the Constitution is not a tool. You know, it's, it's interesting, too, that... Um... I mean, no, so there's, so there's no language in the, in the permitless carry uh, legislation that you introduced that would explicitly prevent law enforcement from being able to run numbers on a gun if they believe it to be stolen or if they believe a crime was committed. Is, is, that, is, that's is right. that accurate? That's accurate. There's, okay. there's nothing in there that's going to prevent law enforcement from doing their job. And, you know, I'm getting a lot of support from law enforcement in, in, throughout Alabama. Wow, uh, I I don't think that they're they have a valid argument. That's that's well, that's good news, man. I I, he, I think he also made another comment. There is a piece of legislation that's like a prohibited person database. I think that's what you would um, called it when we talked earlier. Um, yes, that sounds like a good thing. Kind of tell me a little bit about that. Um, during the uh, 2021 session, we passed a lifetime permit bill. Uh, correction, lifetime permit that you could uh, get in that they created a prohibited person database. Uh, throughout this, uh, I guess the last few years of work in this constitution carry bill, we've discovered a lot of flaws in the permit system here in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So they created a prohibited person database. Anyone that is prohibited under the federal guidelines of owning a gun will be in the system. So instead of tracking law-abiding citizens with permits, we're going to track the bad guys and that, that law enforcement will have access to, to that uh, through a database. And they can check on the side of the road, they can check somebody to see if they are prohibited from owning a gun. That's going to give law enforcement here in Alabama the best tool that they've probably ever had. 
Uh, the permit system is extremely flawed here and offers no safety mechanism for law enforcement. Now is, I mean, are there any anecdotes you can share with us where, you know, the, the permit system failed like recently or anything like that? Well, it, we have 67 counties throughout the state of Alabama and almost every county has a different uh, looking permit. Every permit has a different appearance. A, and the police officers across our state, law enforcement does not know what each permit looks like. So if a police officer stops someone and they show a permit, they're going to take it at face value. They're not even going to know if that is a valid permit. Uh, the permits look different. You know, uh, I had an officer call me Sunday. He, he made a traffic stop. He attempted to call the county from which a permit was being presented. They were closed on Sunday. He had to let the person drive away with the weapon, not knowing if it was even a valid permit. Hmm. Uh, so that's some of the evidence. The, uh, at, when someone's permit is revoked, the sheriff's departments do not go out and collect the hard copy of the permit, and the offender or the person could, could sh continue to show officers or anybody else that permit, and they would take it at face value. That is not safe for, for our officers. Wow. So that sounds like the illusion of safety and the, the illusion that's of security. That's right. Um, wow. Well, man. Um, so what do you think you got the support you need now, man, to get permitless carry in Alabama? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, we did a press conference today. The, the uh, Republican caucus did a press conference announcing that this is their priority bill for the session. Uh, the, all of the leadership has signed on as co-sponsors. It's, it's got more momentum than it's ever had. Um, I'm getting told that the Senate's eager to pass it. And um, so I, I think this, this is our year. <laughs> That's great. Great news. I hope that your, the people of Alabama will take up not only their duty to be armed, but to go get trained too, you know, because we, right. we need a populace that is, I mean, I, I hate to use, because I, you know, I used to listen to rap music when I was a young man. <laughs> and there was this one song that, and it just always takes to my mind, ready for war on the ill block when things ain't peace no more. You know, we got to be right. prepared for a uh, collapse, for what, what, whatever. I mean, look where we're at right now. Uh, I believe the election was rigged and stolen by, by multiple means. That means that the people who would, you know, defraud us would probably allow CCP boots to be on the ground in, in America. And so we yep. don't know what's coming down the pipe. We just need to be prepared. To, that way we can have peace, right? That's right. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show today, sir. Is there anything that we left out? Like, tell me a little bit before you go off. Uh, you have children, you have a, your wife and your kids. How, how old are your kids? And, and tell me about your family a little bit. Yes, I'm married. Uh, my wife is awesome. We have uh, ages 24 to four. Uh, so at 51 years old, I have a four-year-old, but uh, had a sister pass away uh, 12 years ago unexpectedly. We adopted her two boys. So we have a 24-year-old that is a deputy in Alabama. We have a 19-year-old that's a college student. We have a 19-year-old that has graduated and, and working now. I have a 17-year-old that graduates this year, a 16-year-old that's a, a star athlete, a good kid. And then I have the little caboose, the, the four-year-old bad boy. You are blessed, man. That's amazing. We surely <laughs> are. Yep. Well, thanks for being on the show today. And uh, hopefully we'll see constitutional carry pass in Alabama. We'll see Alabama be trained up and ready. Uh, for the coming days and and hopefully you know not only will we stand a chance but we'll thrive you know we need to thrive so sounds good yes yeah, right thanks a lot thank you sir that concludes our program for today again in the coming weeks and months we'll be talking to experts scholars trainers and all forms of gun right activists and second amendment proponents to answer the many questions that we all have and help us to understand the poison that's coming down the pipe and ways that we can defend against it uh, again, my name is Zoe. I'm your host of 2A for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments below the video, and I'll get to them as soon as I can, as fast as I can in the coming weeks and months. So thank you again for watching 2A for today.